How difficult is it to try and undo bad habits? The simple answer is very. If you want to share in some pain about one surface pop-up issues and also discover a very small but critical detail that a top coach identified, then this vlog is for you. I'm James Davis, and I've been a skydiver for over 20 years, jumping and competing all around the world. In the last 18 months, I've been surfing at the wave pool in Bristol to see if wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I wanted to see what would happen if an average surfer trained at the wave pool for a year if they could learn to get barreled, sharing all the mistakes, learning points and experiences along the way. If you've been following the vlog, then you'll know that finding useful surfing information that can help most of us non-superhuman surfers and sharing it is the main goal. You'll also know that I really hate my pop-up and as with any technique, there are levels to learning them. Firstly, a quick thank you to everyone who took the time to share their thoughts and comments on the last vlog about my pop-up. It's very much appreciated and great to see the engagement, so thank you. Without getting too much into the weeds, it seems the ultimate goal is a smooth, calm, fast and efficient pop-up. If you look at my pop-up, there's clearly a lot to improve, but two points I really wanted to start addressing are, one, jumping to my feet properly versus doing this weird kind of knee thing. Just look at my front knee going outside of the arm and then back inside. Number two, to stop kicking and have a quieter position. This caveat has been mentioned before, and that is, everything in life is easier when you have confidence, know you can do it, and anxiety is basically non-existent. You're watching some of the recent waves where I specifically tried to work on these two issues we just mentioned. I even moved back to my old board, which had a bit more volume to help me whilst I worked on addressing these two points. What you are now seeing is someone trying not to kick, focusing on a clean paddle and sorting the knees out when I try to get to my feet. But if you look at the videos, I don't really see the kicking stopping and the number of waves being missed was a lot to say the least. Thinking about specific points while trying not to worry about missing waves was not easy. I'm okay with making mistakes and looking like an idiot in the interest of progression and learning, but it really was difficult. Some of you have also been suggesting a longer board and more volume could help with addressing the issues. So I put myself onto a smaller wave setting and pulled out a foamy surfboard. I'm not precious about image or what other people think and I'm always up for learning. So here are some of the waves on the foamy. It was actually a very useful experience. I'm gonna play this wave again and play it in slow-mo because there's a golden nugget here for one of my issues. Look at my hand placement and how I'm pushing up. When you do press-ups, do you turn your hands 90 degrees outwards and try to hyperextend your elbows? Absolutely not. Apart from the weird body mechanics, it also makes a narrower gap for the knees to pass hence the front knee going to the outside and then back inside. One of the coaches who's been analyzing my surfing saw this and kindly pointed it out. Watching Kelly Slater and John John Florence, you can see both of them have their hands pointing forwards, not outwards like me. It's been mentioned before, and I haven't got it totally incorporated into my process yet, is that they only plant their hands under the chest once the board is planing and that in the final paddles, or just before the board starts the plane, that their chest and chins are pretty close to their boards. Once the board is planing and the hands are planted, the arms straighten, the head is always the highest point, and then the knees and legs follow. If only it was this easy. In this session, I was trying to change the hand placement of the pop-up and keep the elbows in, but it wasn't easy. Even on the foamy, with more time and stability to help me, I still managed to have issues addressing where I was putting my hands and the angle of them. Oh, and one more thing, even on a foamy, look, I'm still kicking. Clearly, it's not that easy to undo bad habits. And I'm gonna stick at it, 
because if you don't start the wave well, then the rest is just a battle to adjust and catch up. In the next vlog, I think we're going to start showing a bit more of the turn progression work, what has improved and what the next steps are, as it's been amazing to get some more input and ideas from a high level coach. Until the next time, enjoy your surfing wherever it is.